guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and today is November 10th, 2023 and this is not live. I apologize, second week in a row not live, but I have some kid things going on. Um, next week will be live though. So for today, I wanted to do a sew with me and we're gonna be working with the Perfect Five books and we're gonna focus on two different techniques. I'm gonna walk you through cutting length of fabric borders and length of fabric sashing because that's something we get a lot of questions on. And then this is a charm pack book, but I'm gonna talk about how a charm pack shrink and how you can make a pattern work with that shrinkage if it is um, within like a four and a half to five inch range. So one size will shrink, one size won't. Um, but if you need the full five inch square, it won't work, my little technique. So um, let me talk about the book a little bit. So this is our perfect five book by It's So Emma. We published it in 2019. And today through Sunday, November 12th, 2023, the physical book is 50% off and it's automatically off. So you don't have to put a coupon or anything. It's already on sale on the website. The PDF is not on sale, only the physical book. But I wanted to show you a little bit about the book. Um, four of the quilts use one charm pack, four use two charm packs, four use three, and then four use four. So it's the total of 16 quilts. They're all very basic in that they're just charm packs, background binding, etc. So today we're gonna work on Snickerdoodle. And what I wanted to show you is this quilt uses 25 blocks and each of the blocks uses four fabric. So that means you need 100 different squares. So we're gonna be using three charm squares. And before we start, I'm gonna be using the Perfect Five ruler, which is an It's So Emma ruler that we designed for Creative Grids. And what I like about it is it's in a quarter inch and half inch increments only. So it doesn't have five eighths, seven eighths, three eighths. And it's just meant to use to cut a charm pack. So it's just very simple, easy to read, and it's exactly five inches. And when we get into that, I'll be able to talk about shrinkage and all of that. Now, so what I did is I took three Bountiful Blooms charm packs by Sherry and Chelsea, and I starched all of the fabrics, and then I put them back in color order. So you'll see from each print, I have at least three squares of that print. So I've already starched, and that's my squares right there. For background, I'm using Bella Solid 9900-200, which is a great color to work with Sherry and Chelsea fabric. It also works great with Lori Holt fabric and Camille Ross Kelly fabric. So those, this one um, is just a great color. It's not bright white, but it's also not ivory. So it's kind of like in between. So this fabric, we started with two and five eighths yards, which is right here. So what I wanna show you is why I cut length of fabric. And if you come to this page, you can see that fabric E and F are here, and fabric D is right here. And we wrote the pattern where you would cut with the fabric strips, piece them back together, and subcut. To me, that wastes time, and I like to use length of fabric because it really stabilizes my quilt. If you're a beginner, it's probably not what you wanna start with but we get so many questions on working with length of fabric that I thought I would just show you what to do. So when you're looking, we're gonna be cutting two that are 56 and a half inch wide, two that are 48 and a half inch wide, and four more that are 48 and a half inch wide. So we're starting with two and five eighths yards, so we have much more than 56 inches. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna give myself five extra inches. So I'm gonna cut like 60 inches off of this first. So I'll just use my mat. And this is all starched. So it's very stiff. So I'm gonna use 30 inches, 30 inches right here. 30 inches right here. And then I'm gonna cut and then set this part aside, because I'm not gonna use that yet. And from this, we're gonna cut our length of fabric, but the first thing we need to do is really work on ironing. So I'm gonna go to the ironing machine, 
and I'm just going to iron everything, get all the creases out. And working with length of fabric really only works if your fabric is nice and flat. So I have the creases out. Now I'm gonna put this back together, keeping the folds as close, to pos as close as possible together. And I'm gonna iron again. And I'm not gonna iron this right here, which is the fold, because you don't wanna put a crease in there. Okay, so from here, we're gonna cut across, but we're gonna use two rulers. So you can either cut it, you can either fold it more and cut or just cut by connecting rulers and I think that is safer because you only have one fold. If this is not, if you don't put your ruler right on this fold with a line, your length of fabric will come out crooked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this this way. I'm actually gonna do this sideways. I'm gonna do it sideways. Okay. So I'm gonna put that there. This is my fold. The fewer folds you have, the more accurate your cut is going to be. So I'm gonna connect two rulers. So if this is right here, if that degree, I don't know what degree that is, but if that is on there straight, you'll be fine. Now here, this is salvage. Make sure you cut through all of the salvage where all those dots are off. And I'm gonna be cutting sideways and this is what I do at home. And you're not trying to line up this, you're lining up this fold right here. And right there, you can see, I didn't get it all the way. Now what I'm going to do, I don't know what that is doing, hold on. Oh, it's cut off, you just can't tell. So then I'm gonna move it as little as possible this way. Okay, so this is where our fold was. This was our original cut. We need four total strips, four and a half inches. And I'm not gonna cut that down. I'm just going to do the four and a half. So I will start at one end and line that four and a half inch up right there cut. Leave my hand right here. Do not move your blade and just move your ruler up and you get a straight cut. So this is two strips that are four and a half inches. I'm going to move that to the side. Those are going to be my fabric F's. I will sub cut these down later because I do not cut them down until they're sewn on. I need two more four and a half, so I just move this. And I do tend to have to do this sideways because I would rather have one fold than two, 
because it'll be more accurate this way. So I'll cut, leave the blade there, move your ruler, and cut. And then here, you can look and see. This should be a 90 degree angle, right there. Like something didn't cut off okay right there that looks like I didn't cut all that so I'm gonna cut that I think I need a new ruler I think it's acting up okay so I'm gonna make that E and so when you look in the book I have taken where you would have cut six four and a half with the fabric sewed those all together, and then subcut. What I've done instead is I've just cut two four and a half by 60 inch strips and two four and a half by 60 inch strips. When it's assembled, once all the blocks are done, I will deal with cutting that down later. Now I need to do the same thing. I, I need to end up with four two and a half by 48 and a half inch strips. So I need two, Two and a half. So from here, I'm going to line this up at five inches. And now I'm going to subcut that into two and a half because two and a half plus two and a half is five. And each one has a layer, they're layered, so there's two each. So I'll fold these. And again, this is Bella Solid Color 200. And then these are my fabric Ds. And so you can see in that little amount of time, I have my sashing and my borders and I didn't have to sew one seam. You just have to be able to do the math and then you just have to understand that with length of fabric, there's no give, there's no stretch. So you have to be exact on your piecing. So from here, what I have left over is this plus this. So now I'm gonna back in and cut the rest. So I need 200 two and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna start there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that from here, but I'm gonna go back and iron this. So I have, let's see, eight layers now. And we're gonna see how many, just from this, how many two, how many two and a half inch squares. So because it's eight layers, I got all that heat and compacted it so it's nice and flat, no wrinkles. And you have to kind of cut hard, if that makes sense, to get through all the layers. So I've made a clean cut. Now I'm going to cut five inches wide. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, let's see, I guess it doesn't matter. This is the fold. So on this fold, I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to rotate this around and that's exactly how I do it at home where I cut sideways. So I have all my degrees are lined up nicely. So this is two and a half. And if I lift my ruler 
and don't move the fabric. I still have that straight cut here. So from here, I'm gonna cut five inches. Make that stay. Two and a half. Okay, so now, if you're not sure if that's lined up, you just do like this. Line it up. And just remember, going through a lot of layers, you just have to cut I guess strong. Okay, so now there's that. Now I'm going to line these up. Now here, I'm not, let's see. I'm going to see how many I get. I don't think I'm going to get all the way through. I might. Okay. This one, I just need to go through the layer a little bit more. Okay, I cut right here. This is off. So, I cut two inches and three inches instead of two and a half by two and a half. That happens a lot to me, actually. So, to save that, these are just going to go in the trash. But I can still save these. And do this or I think I was a quarter of an inch off so let me see how many I have these are all eight let me see make sure there's are eight one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. there's 80 so I have 80 so there's 80 squares so I need 120 more and because these are solids I don't have to worry about right side up because they're the same on each side. So I'll put these aside and I need 120 more. But first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna iron this. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do the same thing where I get all the creases out and then come back in and stack it. So I've got the creases out. Now what I'm gonna do is just fold that back together. And get it nice and flat. Now if I need a, I need, you can get 16 two and a half inch squares from one strip. So if I need 120, that means I need eight strips. I don't know if I'm gonna get that. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna cut these two and a half, okay. I'm gonna cut these two and a half by eight and a half inches first and then get, then after that, then I'll cut my remaining. So for this two and a half by eight and a half, what I like to do is leave your fold here so you have as much as possible. Just cut where the, the edges are. And I think it's easiest to use an eight and a half inch ruler and just cut this strip. Okay, move this, but try not to move it. Now from here, 
I need to cut two and a half inches wide. This is the fold I'm going to cut towards myself. If you're not experienced, don't do that, but I do that at home all the time. I know you guys yell at me, but I try to do what I do at home here. Okay, so this is eight. Sixteen. So I need twenty. So then I'm going to cut my two and a half inches here. So my twenty two and a half by eight and a half are right here. And I'm going to label those B. And these are my C's. Now from here, I'm going to subcut everything down into the remaining two and a half inch squares. So from here, I'm going to trim this to seven and a half because two and a half plus two and a half plus two and a half is seven and a half. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make a seven and a half inch square. And when I do that, I'm going to pull all of these up to see if I got through all four layers of salvage. And you can tell on the salvage there are two dots. So I got through all of those layers. So I should be able to get three by three, which is nine times four. I should be able to get 36 squares from this. And to make it work, I'm going to cut five inches. Move your ruler two and a half. And if you move your ruler like this, it doesn't slide your fabric. Turn your mat and do the same thing. I'm going to start at the five inches. If you tilt your ruler this way, your fabric has not moved. So that's 36. So I have 80 plus 36. I always use a calculator. And I need 200. So I still need 84. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is layer these. So now we've got eight layers. I'm going to put I'm going to go to the ironing table and just press it. What that's going to do is just put that all together. So from here, I'm going to put it on a cutting mat so it doesn't move. Okay, so from here, I'm actually going to turn it this way. Get a flat cut. And then how many do I need? Okay, 200 plus 80. Okay, I need 84, right? Okay, so I'm gonna cut. I don't know how many I'm gonna need, so I'm just gonna do rows. So I'll move this. This is why I always buy extra yardage because when I cut, I just like to, I don't want to have to sit and draw out exactly what I'm doing. I just want to be able to do it. So two and a half plus two and a half is five. 
make sure you've got it lined up at the top and the side. Okay, so that is, there's eight each. Okay, so I need 52 more. Since these have separated, I'm just gonna cut them individually. So then I'll need 20 more after this. And I'm using a calculator on the side and that is what I do at home, actually. I'd probably be pretty much done if I didn't miss cut earlier. Okay, so I need 20 more. I'm just gonna cut a two and a half inch strip, subcut all of this down, and then I'll have more than 200, and that's just safer. That way I just have enough if I miss cut or if I miss do anything. I, um, and the reason I don't have as much left over as you would with the width of fabric is I added that five extra inches to that length of fabric. So there's a waste in that. And I could have trimmed that down and then I would have more room to maneuver with, but that is why, and I started with exactly what the book said, but when I'm doing something at home, I always order half a yard extra so that I can just cut and not have to think. So now I have really taken my time and I have really cut all of this and it's on a design board and then it's great that I have my borders, everything labeled because when I get back to it, I wanna make sure I remember what is sashing and what is borders. Now we're gonna work with the charm packs. Okay. So I'm gonna use this one just cause it's easy to see and I'm gonna show you the perfect five ruler. This ruler is exactly five by five, not five and a half by five and a half, it's five by five. So from here, you can see that across the left, it has shrunk and if you twist it, this is still saved five inches. So when you have a charm pack, and you can see it's totally crooked now. See how it's like all moved around? Let me iron it real quick. And make sure I get all the wrinkles out. And like I said earlier, if you're using, if you need the full five by five, you cannot, you cannot pre-wash or starch your fabric because it shrinks. I refuse to make any quilt that's not starched. This one, we need two, two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles so I can get that from a starched charm pack. I'm gonna show you how. The disadvantage is you literally have to cut charm pack by charm pack. You cannot stack and cut a bunch because it will not work because you will have shortage. So the first thing I wanna do is find where I will be able to cut all the way around three sides and still have fabric. So if I do this, okay, this is exactly five inches. So now I'm gonna turn it and I need a four and a half this way. And you've got four and a half right here. And then from the side that you had the five inches from, you need two, two and a halves. And that's why this ruler is great because the markings are only where you need them. So you have two, two and a half by four and a half inch 
rectangles, but you have to, I'm gonna make one block for you today. So, I'm just gonna pick three different colors and three different prints. Okay, but I'm gonna cut them individually. I'm not gonna cut them stacked because it will not work. Because you have to really think and you really have to get this ruler right where you don't have any shortage. So you have to do it one by one. Now, because this uses three charm packs, you could also just buy a layer cake. You would just have a lot left over. You would have about 25% left over. So I cut one at five, one at four and a half, go back and cut at the two and a half. And it might take you a while to get this right. This is one of those ones that's easy to make a mistake on. So I've got my second color and you're going to do this for, um, you're going to make a hundred of these. So you're going to do this with 50 charm packs. So it will take a while, but if you just take your time, I think the most important part of making a quilt is your seams and your cutting. So if you take your time cutting, when you're putting your block together, you'll have better results and you'll have less frustration. So basically start off with a four and a half by five inch rectangle. I mean, you have very little waste and then subcut that into two and a half. And I think you probably will make a couple mistakes doing this because I usually do. But I will say cutting is my absolute favorite part of the process. So I don't mind sitting here and cutting 50 charm packs. I actually like it. And just take your time. Anytime you're cutting a quilt, if you take your time cutting your quilt, you're going to have so much better results with everything. Okay. So now I have one block ready, and I'm going to get a design board for this block. And I'm kind of giving you this full pattern just because it's a sew with me. But what you're gonna do is each block has four different fabrics. Now, of course, you could do scrappy and you could make it eight different fabrics and totally change the look, that's up to you. But I have four. And what we're gonna do with all of these, we're gonna make, um, we're gonna put the fabrics this way. We're gonna take eight fabric C's, so I'm just gonna take some, and we're gonna draw a line from corner to corner so I'm gonna do that real quick. So I've got, I'm just gonna do eight of these. So, and this one's kind of fun to do one block at a time. Like you could cut one block, piece one block. Or you could do something where you do a block a day, you cut it all out and then each day challenge yourself to make one block and then you spread it out. There's all kinds of ways to, so that's five. And I'm using a friction pin, the heat, the heat of the iron will take the ink away. Some people like friction pins, some people don't, it's up to you. This is just kind of what I do. And then there's my eight. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two different ways to do your corner squares. And basically, I'm copying the book. You put it right like that. So one way you can to make this accurate 
These are called corner squares. You can just put it there and sew, totally fine. What I have the best results with is if you pin it twice, that gives me good results. It does take time, it's up to you. Or you can glue. I usually use three dots and using glue is good if you just want to take, because you're going to make 200 of these. If you want to do all 200 and then walk away from your project and come back, as long as your friction lines are still there, then you could just sit and sew and not have to worry. So I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to glue these. I'm going to show you what you can save if you don't glue. Because if you glue, you can't save your excess. And when I'm doing this, I'm making sure that it's lined up on the two edges. I prefer gluing. It's just, I just feel like I get better results. But some people don't even pin. So you can do whatever works for you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. It's your quilt. You do you whatever you want to do. And I do get glue like this a little bit on my mat. It doesn't even bother me. It'll just come off with a regular soap and sponge if, or your spit, to be honest, is what I would clean it with. Um, and this is, let's see, Acorn Precision Seam Align Glue. So I'll just put these on my design board and then I'm going to use an open toe foot and I'm going to stitch right across the seam and when you're stitching I'll give you a tip okay when you're stitching if you sew right on the line when you fold this back it's a hundred percent even if you sew too far over here when you pull it back you're gonna have excess fabric and it's not gonna line up here if you sew too much this way you're gonna be short. So, just something to keep in mind. So I have the open toe foot. I'm gonna to stitch with a 1.5 stitch length. Whatever stitch length you normally use is what you should use. And see, I've got an open toe foot. And I'm gonna stitch right on the line. Some people stitch slightly to the right of the line. I usually just stitch right on the line and I'm just using our fill color 2000. And you can see the glue doesn't move. I mean, it stays in place. And then here are the two with pins. Okay, so from here, I have this little cutting tool and I'm gonna cut these apart. I also sometimes use this thread cutter that's on my machine, or you can just use scissors. So from here, you're gonna trim a quarter inch away from your seam and this ruler is great for that because your line is right there. You don't even have to worry about an eighth of an inch because the half inch is right there. And when you cut it off, you can see I've got all the glue off because of the way I placed it. All the glue comes off. And I'm going to throw those away. Now this one I didn't glue 
So this one, if you wanted to, you could stitch on that seam and save this if you wanted to. I'm not in the mood to save fabric today, so I'm not going to worry about that today. So I'm just going to trim these. Now, you could do two at a time. So you're going to have eight for each block. From here, I'm going to lay these kind of out, space them out, and I'm going to press down, and that's going to set my seam. The friction pin went away. From there, I'm going to put my iron right here and then press. Right there, press. Because if you start all the way over here and press, you're gonna get wavy fabric. Okay, so from here, it should be exactly two and a half by four and a half, and it is. It's a little bit off. Oops, that one's a little bit off. So if you want to, you can check them and trim them down. This one's a little bit off too. Just to make them perfect, this is totally not necessary, but this is the kind of stuff that I do at home. It's kind of the stuff I enjoy, which is kind of, you can call me crazy. But like that much, it does matter to me. And I'm just lining up the four and a half, the two and a half on this ruler. So they're pretty good, they're just not perfect. And if you don't care that much, then don't do it. Just This is just what I do. So in the Sew With Me's, I try to show you exactly what I do. And I know some of it is tedious. I totally get it. I just am gonna show you what I do because this is what I do at home. I drive myself crazy. Now, your step two is you're gonna put two matching together, like that. So this is when a design board is great. And then you just make sure you've got them all in the right spot. From here, I am going to pin. So I'm gonna put this right side together and then this makes it easier when you go to the machine because you see how I chain pieced. And then this makes it, see how I trimmed that? Now it's 100% accurate. I don't have to move it around and make it fit because I've already trimmed it. So I know that it's going to fit. And so it's just really nice. I like to see that. So again, we are sewing from the Perfect Five book. It is the physical copy is 50% off until Sunday. A lot of you probably already have this. But today, what I really wanted to focus on was teaching you length of fabric and teaching you working with charm packs that shrink. Now, one question I know a lot of you are probably asking is, if you need a five inch square, what do you do? I would waste money and buy a layer cake and trim down and then save the leftover for something else because I just cannot work with fabric that is not starched. So I've got that all lined up and I'm gonna change feet to a quarter inch foot with a guide. I'll show that to you up close and then we're just gonna chain down all four of these. So the foot that I have has a little lever right here and that the fabric just goes right against it and that's the type of foot I prefer to use. Put your fabric in. And then I just remove the pins before I get to them.
cut these apart. And then here I'm going to look and it says that I'm going to press them down this way. So I'm going to line them all up the same way. Lay them out, set my seam by just laying the, laying the iron flat and putting steam. Putting the iron right there and press. So now we have our units, and then here what I would do is lay your block out, and I'll show you some little tricks on getting your seams to match up right here. So the first thing is I wanna make sure I've got my fabric the right way, I've got my whites the right way, but then I've got three florals here, and that's okay. But if I did this, that would be too many florals probably. But in the end, try not to overthink it, which is exactly what I'm doing right now because that's what I do. Um, so I think this looks good. And you could just put this right sides together and sew. Why don't we just do that and see how it comes out instead of marking? I think it'll be fine because of how accurate I have done all of my pieces. And we'll see if they line up and it'll make sense to you in a second. So I'm going to sew down this way and when I get to right here I'm going to sew a couple stitches, sew across. I'm not going to cut my thread. That's called chain piecing. So you're going to set your seam, press this way, and then this way. And right there, the white matches up perfectly with the intersection between the rectangles. Now I could have measured and pinned, but I was pretty confident that because I took my time cutting my charm packs and gluing that that would line up. From here, I'm gonna put this right sides together. Just basically the seam nests, it locks. Pin there, pin at the end, pin at the beginning, and then you're gonna sew your last seam. your seam, press to one side, and here you can see these lined up perfectly. If they don't, you know, it may or may not matter to you. It's totally up to you. And then this should be eight and a half inches square. So what I'm going to do, which is what I always do, trim my block up. I just don't like to have the extra threads. So this one came out pretty perfect. 
And I think if you cut your charm packs one by one, you can get this result. If you stack your charm packs after their starch, you will not get this result. You'll have a lot of these zigzag edges in it, meaning you won't have it trimmed down. And then if I measure it, it's eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths. It's never gonna come out exactly eight and a half, but let me show you if you're nervous about that, let's pretend that we are going to put, this as block one, and I'm gonna add a fabric B, which is my sashing, which is cut exactly eight and a half. So you wouldn't change the cutting on this. You would make it, leave it eight and a half. Pin it together at the bottom, at the top, and then once in the center. And then we're gonna sew this together and you can see it's kind of, see how that white is wavy? It's totally fine. But if you've pinned here and here, it will work itself in. And just hold your finger on this last pin and pull. Then you'll set your seam. Press the sashing. And then here, if you're nervous about it, you can trim off just a tiny, tiny bit if there's a little bit hanging over. And then you would just keep uh, building your block. So hopefully I've given you some tips today that you can work with. I do love this Snickerdoodle um, quilt. It's actually the one on the cover. And the reason it's on the cover of the quilt book is because I usually pick my favorite and put it on the front. And I do encourage you just to always take, you know, all of you have charm packs probably. If you're just looking for something, you don't always have to go buy something new. You know, a lot of you already have this book. A lot of you already have one, two, three, or four charm packs. Pull from your stash, get a bolt of your favorite background, and then you can just always be churning out quilts. And I would just encourage you to look through whatever books you have, whatever, you know, looks best to you. Just sew it, like if that inspires you, Go with that and just always think we colored these in solids but you can see how beautiful this looks in fig tree on the cover and how it looks beautiful in bountiful blooms by sherry and chelsea it's a great um since we're in november it's a great fall look and i do love the solid on the outside of it because i think the blocks just really shine so that is our um, and remember the book is 50 percent off now I'm gonna show you some new stuff on the blog. So this is a feature that we had on the blog for a signature quilt. And so this I kind of wanted to show you Another way you can think outside the box. So this is uh, called Jelly Belly Bars. It's a free pattern from years and years ago from Fat Quarter Shop. It's free on our blog, it's free on our YouTube channel, and we have a YouTube video with it. And this features me and my sister designs. Well, this fabric right here features Layla Boutique fabrics. And what Kate did is she went to a family reunion and she left out Bella, uh, rectangles of Bella solids. And so you can see some people just signed it. Some people did their family tree. And then the very center is um, the name of the family reunion, where it was, the year. And so after everybody wrote their name and they used Pigma pens, she put this into a beautiful quilt. So this is a great idea for um, a wedding. 
a family reunion. But if you think about it, think about how creative Kate was. She took something that's a free pattern and she took Bella solids from her stash and then she just used a jelly, jelly roll she already had. And then on the back, she used um, some fabric from the same collection. This collection is Flower Pot. Um, this was custom quilted by Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti. And like I said, at a family reunion, she invited people to sign a fabric rectangle, and then she turned them into a quilt, signed with a Pigma pen, and all the information on this is on um, the Jolly Jabber blog. So that is one way that you can create a wonderful family memory without having to invest in a pattern. It's as simple as that. Just take something simple that has a rec rectangle and there you go. The next thing I wanted to talk about is my Stronger Together 2023 quilt is going to be raffled off at the UNCF's 34th annual gala. I can't say that word. UNCF's 34th annual gala in Houston, November 18th, 2023. So I am donating my quilt to that. The money raised from the quilt will go to support the UNCF's work to increase the number of African-American college students and help them graduate. The quilt was designed by Michelle Ramsey of Quilts Made With Love. This year, Fat Quarter Shop and our customers donated $15,668 dollars and then we are working on 2024 working on another stronger together quilt it will feature four different designers and we will have more information in december on the jolly jabber blog and then we will in february be showing um uh, those designers and talking about their design so Today we're going to have a little fun and we're going to do a giveaway. And so three people are going to win a book and a charm pack. And what I would like to know is I would really like to know what do you guys want to see with the Sew With Me? Because we've been changing up our live streams a little bit and adding in different Sew With Me's. Um, and hopefully today I covered two things that you guys have asked for, which is length of fabric and working with charm packs or pre-cuts that are shrunk down from starching. What other things would you like me to incorporate? Because we're always looking for ideas. And if you give me some ideas, we might be able to see it in the future. Thank you so much for watching. And we will announce winners on Friday, November 17th on this YouTube channel um, in the community tab. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week.